Hello, welcome to Scrap Time, episode 965. My name is Christine. And I'm Gemma. And today we're gonna show you how to make a t-shirt similar to this one using the Hazel and Ruby masks and the Inko dye from Lumi. So we have our t-shirt here and what we like to do is just prep it ahead of time. This is Gemma's shirt and she wanted to write two fab for you. So we laid out our letters so we knew how much room it would take and then we put little pins in so we know where to put the ink. So now we're going to take off the letters and put them aside. Okay, so now we have the ink and you give it a shake. We have the roller top on. Yeah, you make sure when you shake it that it's uh, closed. Okay. You take out your little cap and then you give it a squeeze and you roll the ink on. And you want to cover the whole shirt. You want to work a little quickly if you can. Keep squeezing out that ink. Now what Gemma's going to do is just go a little bit outside these pin marks. Now the dye, when it goes out, it has a very strong sort of peroxide smell, just to let you know. Pulling my breath. <laughs> <laughs> That's a reason of why you need to go quickly. Yeah, one reason. Do you want me to do some? It's fine. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> My turn, okay. So I'm gonna squeeze it and just go a little outside some of these pin marks and that just gives it a sort of a fun edge to it. Maybe Gemma you can start to take out some of the pins. I'm just going to, I'm not adding more ink at this point, I'm just trying to get some of it in. So then what you do is you take a napkin and just wipe off some of the excess ink. And you'll notice right now it's sort of just this blandish color. When we go outside you'll see how the color changes. And we're just using a foam core um, sheet here underneath. Okay, so now we want to put the letters back on. So we start with the O to center it. And these letters from Hazel and Ruby um, have a bit of a stick to them, which makes it really great for doing on these shirts. So then we're going to line up that A sort of with that middle. And wherever you put down um, the mask, that will go white. It's not going to develop into the color. And we're using magenta ink today. Oops. 
Ooh. Just gonna move it up a little. Okay, so there we have our masks on. And now Gemma's gonna take her shirt outside to start developing the color, and I'm gonna show you another one. Bye guys. So I have a shirt here and what I've done is I've masked off an area and I'm going to put this flower that I've made with the word dream. So I'm going to take off my letters. So now when I put my ink on, I want to stay, just overlap a little. I don't want to, um, I want to try and stay within that square. just wipe it off here so it doesn't I'm just using some of that ink, getting it on. And then I'm gonna use my, I can probably even use a brush. So I'm going to take off my tape so I can move out the shirt a bit. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting my M on so I can work across. And then I have my stem. And my flower. And my petal. And what I'm going to do is take pins now. And because we use foam core, I can just push the pin right into the foam core. And that will hold my elements on when I go outside. 
We'll just have to make sure we put in the sun where we're not getting a shadow on it. So there we go. So now I'm ready to take mine outside. So we are outside now and you can see that how Gemma had come out earlier and how pink hers is and mine is just now starting to slowly change color. We don't have direct direct sunlight so um, but even if you don't have direct sunlight they just say keep it out a little longer. If you're in the direct sun it takes 10 minutes indirect probably 15 to 20 but you can sort of tell by how the color has changed. So we're just going to leave them out here to develop and then we'll show you what they look like once we come back in. So we're back inside. Since it was cloudy out I actually left my shirt for 20 minutes. One thing I just want to point out is that first off you can see there's little bits of color so that's where my fingers would have touched with the ink so um, if you don't want that to happen just make sure that the ink doesn't get onto these places. The other thing is I should have probably put some pins to hold back the shirt because you can just see there's a little difference in color here where it sort of shadowed it a bit. So if you want it completely flat you want to really pin down your corners. But now Jim and I are going to take off our letters and reveal our designs and let's hope it worked the way we wanted it. You can see how nice and crisp my dream is and Gemma's words are coming out perfectly as well. Now you can put down anything as a mask. I want to one time try putting some stencils down that I have as masks. Um, paper clips, anything that'll block the sun from getting to the ink. So there you can see my flower and my words and Gemma's words. So now what we want to do is wash out the color using the Lumi Inca Wash and that will wash out the excess and set the color and then after that you can wash it over and over again just with your clothes and the ink will not come out. Lumi also sells this Inco film. It's transparent inkjet film for printing custom negatives and they have a Lumi app where you can transfer your photos to a negative and you can either print your own or you can order a negative from them. So I tried printing my own this was my photo and I think what I needed to do was to have a photo with more contrast because with the grays and that. Um, here was my negative and they suggest doing two negatives and stacking it. So this is actually two negatives um, on top of one another and then my final print turned out like this. So it wasn't that bad. It turned out okay but when I tried to print it on a shirt I found that it I, there wasn't enough contrast to it and it sort of um, blended into my shirt so I didn't really like it was a gray shirt I was printing on but you can do your negatives just in my opinion I think you need to have a really high contrast photo to really get the nice dark image but that is another option that you can do with the Lumi Inca dye and the negatives. So I just want to finish off by showing you the shirts after they've been washed. So here was the one Gemma made and you can see that the letters are nice and crisp. Um, the one thing we found though being the white shirt is we think some of the ink when it was washing out in the water got on the shirt because the shirt is no longer that nice crisp white. Um, it has a little bit of a pink tinge to it. But this has since been washed a couple of times. And then here we have my shirt. The edges stayed okay. You can see where um, I had a little bit of a fold in there that caused a shadow. There was a bit of it's softer than um, the whole thing. Uh, that doesn't really bother me. I don't mind that. 
And for some reason too, we have a little bit of coloring in the flower. It might have been the paper and the sun going through the paper. I'm not sure. But overall, I'm happy with how it turned out. The letters are nice and crisp and my flower is nice and crisp. And I have more of a contained area versus Gemma who has the crazy area. And then Gemma made one more. Um, it, same technique with the pink and then the uh, masks for the letters. And this time she wrote, it's too far, because that's what she says every time you ask her to get something. She always says, it's too far. So she decided to put it on a shirt, again, with randomly painting around and doing it. So those are a few of our shirts using the masks with the Inko dye. Well, that's it for today's episode. Be sure to check out our website at www.scraptime.ca. And on our next episode, I'm showing you another way to use the Lumi Inko dye this time with scan and cut stencils. So please join us. Thanks for watching Scrap Time.